Good afternoon. Today we remember Herman of Alaska. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who raised up your servant Herman to be a light in the world and to preach the gospel to the people of Alaska, illumine our hearts that we also in our own generation may show forth your praise who called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. When Elisha returned to Gilgal, there was a famine in the land. As the company of prophets was sitting before him, he said to his servant, put the large pot on and make some stew for the company of prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs. He found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds and came and cut them up into the pot of stew, not knowing what they were. They served some for the men to eat. But while they were eating the stew, they cried out, oh, man of God, there is death in the pot. They could not eat it. He said, then bring some flour. He threw it into the pot and said, serve the people and let them eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read selections from Psalm 148 responsively by full verse. 
Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. An argument arose among them as to which one of them was the greatest. But Jesus, aware of their inner thoughts, took a little child and put it by his side. And he said to them, whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For the least among all of you is the greatest. The Gospel of our Savior. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Amen. As Father Marshall said, today we commemorate St. Herman of Alaska on the anniversary of his death. Herman did not begin his life as a Russian Orthodox monk. If you want to get into the uh, details of his early childhood, I'm afraid you'll have to go back to morning prayer and listen to Father Marshall uh, expound on several of the historical theories of where he originally came from. But when first he began his life as an Orthodox or a Russian Orthodox monk, he was at the monastery at Valam outside of St. Petersburg. From there, he was sent by Catherine the Great as part of a mission to Kodiak Island, an Alaskan island which was, at the time, occupied by the Russian Empire and under the control of the Russian-American company, which dealt in trapping and trading of furs. At the time, and for years to follow, conditions were very bad for the native Aleutic population. The fur traders who founded the settlement on Kodiak Island had massacred several hundred people in 1784 on a tiny island, which is still revered as a site of sacred grief for the Aleutic people. Over the next century of colonial Russian occupation, the indigenous population would face forced labor, fractured family systems, and disease. Into this fraught situation stepped Herman and the other nine monks from the Balam Monastery. They were shocked and appalled by the treatment of the Aleutic people and seemed determined to work to defend them against the overreaches and abuses of the fur trading company. And they did for years. However, Herman at his core deeply desired a solitary life. In fact, at the monastery back in Russia, he had actually petitioned the abbot to let him live in his own hermitage about a mile from the main monastery and eventually he sought out a more removed existence in Alaska as well. He retreated to Spruce Island, which is separated by, from Kodiak Island by a mile long street of water. Though he had gone seeking a solitary life, he was visited often, mostly by Aleut friends and eventually around his hermitage, a guest house, a chapel and a school sprang up. There were also some people who chose to join him long-term as disciples. My little Wikipedia dive mentioned by name Gerasim Ivanovich Zirianov, who was an orphan, and Sofia Vaslova, who was an Aleutic woman. I'm sure life was hard for them on Spruce Island. And I know that Herman's kindness and advocacy did not, did, 
did not end the oppression of indigenous people in Alaska, not by a long shot. But what I see in Herman's story is the story of a man working as hard as he could to find God both in the solitary beauty of nature and in the lives of the people around him. Herman was a fierce advocate and a compassionate ally when he needed to be. According to another story I found, he returned to Kodiak Island during an epidemic and was the only Russian to join in the efforts of healing and companionship of the dead and dying uh, in that village. Truly, I admire the kind of faith and courage that it would take to live that deeply into your values as he did. Herman was once asked if his hermetic lifestyle made him lonely. He responded, I am not alone. God is here as God is everywhere. Today, I wonder what would it take for us to have that kind of humility, to realize that we are not bringing God with us wherever we go, but instead that we are meeting God in nature and in other people where God already is. What would it take for us to see through the narratives that dehumanize the people around us and to instead relentlessly seek out community, equality, and peace? Today, in a historical moment that feels characterized by grief and violence and cruelty, I am comforted by the story of St. Herman of Alaska, who was a friend, a teacher, and an advocate for those around him, and who spent his life seeking God in the beauty of the natural world. I pray that all of us today may find the grace and strength to do the same wherever we find ourselves. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. On our parish prayer list, we pray in particular for Rick, Chris and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug, and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Sunny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Gail, the O'Donnell family, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Vula, Lorraine, Jeffrey, Christopher, Felipe, Diane, Florence, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, John and Janet, Paul, Gloria, Doreen, and Adam. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer.
Gracious God, what we have asked faithfully, grant effectually to the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be always with you. So with you. God's peace. Peace. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But, my dear siblings, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In your loving purpose, you chose us before the foundation of the world to be your people. You gave your promises to Abraham and Sarah and bestowed your favor on the Virgin Mary. We give you thanks for the example and encouragement of your saints, especially Herman of Alaska, whom we remember today, for their witness to the truth of your gospel and for the hope of glory which we share with them. Therefore, with people of every nation, tribe, and language, with the whole church on earth and in heaven, joyfully we give you thanks and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and honor to you, God of grace, for you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, once for all on the cross to be the one perfect sacrifice for the world, that all who believe in him might have eternal life. The night before he died, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in this sacrament of the suffering and death of your son, we now celebrate the wonder of your grace and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Redeemer God, rich in mercy, infinite in goodness, we were far off until you brought us near, and our hands are empty until you fill them. As we eat this bread and drink this wine, through the power of your Holy Spirit, feed us with your heavenly food, renew us in your service, unite us in Christ, and bring us to your everlasting kingdom. Oh, the depths and riches of your wisdom, O oh God, how unsearchable are your judgments and untraceable your ways. From you and through you and for you are all things. To you be the glory forever. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb, the gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Mm -hmm. 
Christ that is in it. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, bless you forevermore. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.